Hello and congratulations on the films above you. Thank you. So first off, a question for both of you. In general, what is the very first thing that you usually do when you get a new script or a new project? And if anything, what was unique to your early prep work on Promising Young Woman? I learned the lyrics to Stars Are Blind by Paris Hilton. That was a sort of unique prep. <laughs> so I printed those out and tried to figure them out. Um, gosh, this was so this was so much one of those things where it wasn't a lot of kind of solo prep work for me. It was lots of sort of chat. It was lots of conversation. It was lots of sort of talking to Emerald. And we had a really nice couple of days of sort of meeting, um, you know, various cast and like reading through stuff and talking about it. And so it felt like quite a kind of ensemble rehearsal period slash kind of preparation. So none of it felt like it wasn't a lot for me. It wasn't a lot of kind of going away and thinking about things alone. It was lots of like talking things out, um, which was really helpful. Once, you know, Emeril said, yes, we, we want you to do the film. I sent this script to my acting coach and then I met with her and we talked about it and we did some scene work. Did we do a, a private moment for Gail? I don't think if we did, but we did a lot of, I worked with my coach on it. I, I've been working with Kim, her name's Kimberly Harris. I've been working with Kimberly for many years now. So I, um, it's, I found it useful now because I'm doing so many other things that like, my work with her specifically has like, helps to just kind of focus me and she sees things that I don't always see, um, which is, I found really wonderful. So yeah, I sent it to um, Kimberly and then we, we met you know, a few times and talked about it and worked through some things. So, yeah. I'm sorry, a, pr a private moment? Is, it, is that just developing a, a private moment for your character on the side that isn't in the film, just for, for prep? Oh, uh, yeah, I was, it's an acting school thing. I'm like getting all like acting school thing. Oh, yeah, great. I've done, so a character private moment is when you sort of create, and different studios do it in different ways, but um, the way I've been taught and, and the way I do it with Kimberly is that we sort of create, it's about creating a moment of privacy, an intimacy moment with the character and you get in, valuable, valuable information that's not about the script at all. It's not about what happens on the script. It's often backstory, it's historical. Um, there are activities that you do as the character that are usually involve eating something, drinking something, some sort of activity, but it's really about finding the intimacy and the privacy of the character and you're getting valuable information that then you can bring to layer in underneath the work that you, um, that you do on set, you know, um, with, with the other actor. So it's like the layering backstory kind of filling in the blank. So they're just experienced and lived and not just an idea. This might be a, a good, but kind of broad follow-up that doesn't really have one clear cut answer, but I'm curious, what is your approach to working on a supporting character in a way that supports the main character's arc in the story at hand, but also makes her feel like a fully realized person, which I think you well accomplish here. What's fun about this is getting to watch Carrie work as well as sort of interact with her and then listening to Emerald and Bo and just sort of being in this space. You know, you do all the prep, ideally so you can let it go and be in the moment. So I think the support really is about hopefully, I mean, if it, it ideally is always about supporting the other actor you're with, whether you're a lead character or a supporting character. So it's really about listening and, and, and being in the moment and, and, and doing what is necessary in that moment as much as possible, hopefully from a sense of truth and a sense of um, um, telling the story. Did you two ever work out any backstory for your characters? I just find that I always wonder about those things when I just really want to continue spending time in that space. And I could have done that in the coffee shop. So did you uh, talk about any of their history together with Emerald? Yeah, I think we just, you know, we decided that she, you know, Cassie definitely worked there for a while. Um, and that, you know, really Gail's her only friend. Um, and that, that she really is the only person that she has any kind of relationship with. And I think, you know, uh, there's a, there's a kind of comfort there that she doesn't have with anybody else. And I think that's fostered by just Gail being a really solid, no bullshit person um, who can be honest with her in a way that not very many other people can and also isn't intimidated by her, which I think she's, Cassie's very good at kind of like shutting lots of people out. And I think Gail just sort of sees through that and doesn't, you know, there's no kind of intimidation. She can just deal with whatever. Um, so I think that sort of, and I, what I found so um, helpful about Laverne's performance as Gail was 
the freedom that she had in playing her and the fact that when I walked into the coffee shop and we started shooting the scenes and it was like the second day of filming. So you're still kind of feeling away and um, it felt like her coffee shop. It was her, it was like a very lived in space, even though it was like a set that we literally just walked onto onto the second day of filming. It felt like such an inhabited character and that this coffee shop belonged to Gail and Laverne was fully inhabiting that character and was very, very free to the point where she was able to just like improvise lines and start scenes in different ways and end scenes in different ways. And I think that coming in and doing that as a supporting character is incredibly difficult and does take that like preparation to be able to come in and just do it and for it to feel like so effortless. I feel like you could feel that quality when you watch the film. Um, Terry, you also have a great opportunity here to work with like an endless ensemble of fantastic people. So of everyone in the movie, whose process would you say aligned with yours the most? And then who challenged you to adapt the most? Oh, me? Yeah. Uh, gosh, who, I guess probably Alfred Molina and I had worked together before. He played my father in an education. And so it was so much fun to get to work with him again. And I think um, uh, there was sort of, that was kind of nostalgic in a nice way. And um, so I felt like I knew how he worked and we, you know, so I guess we worked in a similar way. Um, and similarly, actually working with Connie as well um, was was somewhat uh, like, I think we sort of work in a similar way. I think working with Laverne and Bo and, you know, um, Sam Richardson was so much fun for me because, you know, I was really surrounded by people who, whether they were comedians or they were just very adept at comedy, like Laverne, I would term as like a dramatic actress who's incredibly adept at comedy. Um, it just kept me on my toes in a way that like was so exciting because I haven't been in a film where I've been surrounded by so many people who can do that. Um, and uh, so that was really fun and totally different from how I, you know, my experience of film. And I remember even like the second day of filming saying to Bo, like, I can't believe how much I'm laughing. Like I never laugh this much. Like I love my job and I've loved the films that I've done, but they haven't been like funny <laughs> they've been kind of quite um so it was just really nice to do something where there was like a levity you know even though we were dealing with a difficult subject like there was a lot of laughter on set mm -hmm. how about uh getting that through emerald what can she do as kind of the leader on set to you know not only set a tone where you're enjoying the work that you're creating despite the subject matter but also where you're exploring this subject matter in a way that feels fully safe well i mean i think you know, I I had complete faith in Emerald from the moment we met, but there was one thing that she was very clear on that sort of set, sort of in my mind, I, I, I knew that the rest of the film would sort of be, would follow this order. So we were talking, a, really, it was like the first meeting we ever had and we were talking about the um, the stripping scene, you know, when she when Cassie goes to the um, the party, uh, dresses the nurse and, um, and Em was sort of describing how the scene would go down and she would go in and she puts the bottle down and she was talking me through the whole thing. And then she said, and then she reaches for her zip and then the camera turns on the men and then you never see anything. You just see their reactions to it. And that's kind of how she handled the whole film. There was, you never, there was nothing ever, I never felt. And similarly to Cassie, I think that there's very little, you know, in the film where Cassie's not completely in control. Um, she's, you know, under the guise of being someone who's out of control, she's completely in control. Um, and so I think, you know, it was all very considered and thought through. So I think there was sort of, yeah, it felt like a very, um, that all felt completely safe. Also, it was, she's just so funny, Emerald. She's just one of the funniest people. And she's like a joy as a leader, you know, cause she's hilarious. And, um, and so the crew loved her and all the actors loved her. And um, so it was very kind of, the, the set was just fun and light and we took it seriously when we needed to. I bet for you, Laverne, what's something unique to Emerald's process that you wish you saw more sets out there? I've been very lucky in my career that I've, I've worked with a lot of women and I've worked with a lot of women directors, but Emerald is, as Carrie said, she's hilarious. She's so genuinely funny and just infectious. And I like want to hang out with her like all the time. It's like this, like Emerald is just so, such a good time that like, and so there's such a, she very naturally puts everyone at ease. And so there's a safety in that. And, but there's, she manages to be really funny. Um, 
but like fully in control and in command of everything as well. And so she's handling things and is on top of everything in a brilliant way, but there's so much fun with it. Um, so I think that sense of fun, um, but, the, but, but a clarity too of the vision. So she's, I mean, she wrote it, so, but there's a crystal, she's crystal clear about what she wants and needs in a moment. So that that kind of, clarity gives me and as an artist and room to play like to, to to understand where we're going and then to find ways to sort of um live um in the character and um, while going for whatever it is that that we're going for in, the, in, a, in a scene or in a moment thank you guys so much for your time today and again big congratulations thank, thank you, you very much. much.